Thank you for tuning in and welcome to Jamie TV where we do not pissy pants about. That piece of music you just heard there was supposed to be a short little ditty, just a quick little demo thing I threw together to help me to demonstrate some new effects apps from Design by Paul. But it became a bit more than that, I kind of liked it. So it's now available to listen to as a finished piece at my Bandcamp account. And while you're there at my Bandcamp, checking it out, maybe have a look at the merch, order yourself a nice new t-shirt, and you'd really be helping out this channel if you do so. Now I made that piece of music in Audio Evolution, so let's go to Audio Evolution and have a look at my effects chain, and let's see how I made that fretless bass guitar sound. In Audio Evolution, if we want to see our effects grid, we simply select the instrument that we want, then we go over to the channel strip, and down at the bottom there are some buttons. If you're on a phone, there'll be multiple buttons and you just keep clicking through them until you find what you want. On the iPad there are just two. I click the second one and here's the button for my effects grid. Now here down at the bottom is my effects chain. The first thing in my chain is Blue Mango's multiband compressor. And the reason I chose this compressor is because when you're playing fretless bass those low end swells can really be a bit much in the mix so to help it be a little easier to mix i was able with this compressor to split the frequencies into four different bands and then hit those low frequencies really hard to bring them down a bit and keep them under control then the meat and potatoes of the sound is really here and then I was able to use it kind of a little bit like an EQ and push these higher frequencies up a little bit just to bring a little more clarity into the mix. And then I hit the sound with the DD21. Now, even when my bass sound may sound clean in a mix, I've usually got something adding some gain, a little bit of overdrive at the front end, just to add that little bit of zing. And that's what helps the bass sound cut through in the mix. Next, I've got the CH21, which is providing the chorus sound. And then the TD21 is adding a little tiny bit of reverb and some echoes. Now my last video was about Waverly Excel and because I was demonstrating Excel I wanted to use Excel for all the instruments including the bass even though Excel might not be the most obvious first choice for a bass synth but it sounded pretty good it sounded like this but I wanted it to be dirtier so I introduced the DD21 Now I've already done a live stream video with the DD21 and I'll put a link to that above but I was playing guitar in that video and I just wanted to show you how you can also use this with synths and bass synths and stuff like that. So what we do is we use the pre-gain and the distortion tone to shape that the character of that saturation. Let's just make it really filthy. Now of course, to offset any increased volume that you get by adding this filth at the front end, we have a volume control for the overall effect, but we can also blend it in and out of the mix. So let's just kind of go for full on filth and blend it in. Now I really like that because I can still hear the notes of the actual bass and also the filth. Okay, now let's just bring that back to something like it was before. I actually can't remember exactly how it was set, but I'm not sure. 
that'll do for now okay and of course I also brought in the CH21 for some flanging sound The DD21 is a very versatile app and it's very simple to use. I've found it works equally well on bass, on guitar, on synths, so it's a really useful effect to have. The CH21, however, with enough tweaking, you can find some nice sweet spots that do work well for bass and guitar, but there are better apps for chorus on bass and guitar. Where this app really excels is for your madder, slightly more extreme experimental sounds, which tend to work better on synths, like this. Controls of the CH21 really are pretty straightforward. Let's just play this bass line, introduce the effect, and you'll hear we've got kind of a flanging type of a sound. With this control here, we select the delay of the flanger, or indeed the chorus. In between flanger and chorus, we've got a kind of no man's land of bizarreness. And over here, we can adjust the feedback. Drop it back for a slightly subtler effect. Or something more extreme. And we can even venture into negative feedback. Which really is pretty interesting sounding. Now down here we have the LFO for the modulation. So we can make it quicker. And here we decide how much of the LFO to blend into the mix. So if my mouse will let me, we'll take it all the way down. Make it really fast and then blend it in. And then over here, we can decide how much of that effect we want to blend in to our mix. Let's just make a couple of adjustments here. Okay, so let's wind it all the way out of the mix. And then blend it in. Okay, 
Now over here, we have a folder where there are a few presets to get you going and you can save your own sounds over here. And also this effect will resize. If I just make this smaller, which is pretty handy when you've got a lot of things on your screen. The TD21 is an absolutely fabulous sounding tape delay I have completely fallen in love with. It sounds very much like a Roland Space Echo, which is one of my favourite sounds. It doesn't have all the same features, but it definitely has the tone. And it sounds great no matter what you plug into it. So here are a few playing examples. The TD21 has a very simple to use interface. Let's just throw it into the mix. It has a folder system, the same as the CH21 and the DD21, where you get a few presets to get you going and a bank to save your own user presets. Over here is where we set the length of the delay. So if I wind it right round to the left, we can create a slapback type effect. I'm just going to blend a bit more into the mix so you can hear that a bit better. Now let's lengthen the delay time and it's now out of time with my arpeggio. This control over here blends how much of the delay we want to hear in the mix. Let's put it back in time. I think that's about right there. Now it has its own reverb, which sounds beautiful. And in fact, if I take all the feedbacks out of the mix, wind the time down as well, that's right. Okay, now here we can set the reverb. This will change the size of the reverb. So make it, it'll make it sound much more cavernous, dialing it round to the right. I like a smaller room over here. Let's put some more in the mix. Go for a bigger size room again. And that really is quite gorgeous. Right, let's put some delays back in. More feedbacks this time. Take the mix down a little maybe. Okay, and then of course we have the high passes which affect the sound of the echoes. So we can take out some of the lows, accentuate the highs and vice versa. So what we have here is three fantastic sounding effects apps, which are all really easy to use. And for a stupid old hippie like me, that's a massive bonus. The TD21 
is wonderful. I can see me using that on loads of stuff. It's like a new personal favorite for me. I hope that you've enjoyed listening to me demonstrate them and I hope I've covered everything. But if you do have any questions, then please do comment below the video with your questions. I always reply. And down there you'll find links to my social media, my website, my Patreon, Bandcamp, my email address if you want to contact me directly, all that stuff, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, thank you for watching and until next time, take care of yourselves, make lots of music, be good people and don't pissy pants about. See you later.